Hey, and welcome to Winning Conversations. We are so glad you tuned in today. We have the one and the only Rashida Jackson with us today. Now, Rashida does our social media here at Heritage. She's been an important part of our church family for a long time, her and her husband. And we were just so touched by her, her heart as we had this conversation. Of course, Andy and I spend a lot of time with her because she's on the communication team with us. And we just felt like this was an extension of our time together. And we are so glad that we get to share it with you. So let's go ahead and jump right in and I hope you enjoy it. Welcome Rashida Jackson to Winning Woo-hoo. Conversations. Hi. Are you excited? Yes. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am so excited about this podcast. I'm excited too. It's going to be fun. And this feels like another communications team meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For those of you who don't know, Rashida's on our communications team. She does all of our social media, everything you see. And she's a pro. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> this is so weird. I, I've i had a podcast before, but this is so weird just being back on this side of the mic. So anyway, yeah, go ahead. I mean, we talk all the time. We have conversations all the time. Right. Yeah. So it's just another conversation. Yes, it's just yeah. another conversation. Yeah. Just pre- pretend the microphone's not here. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. great. How's yeah. your morning? It's good. Good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. I'm sure you are busy because you're always busy. Always I feel like you're busy. always doing so much. Always doing Because so you much. do so much. <laughs> yeah. What all do you do? Um, well, for the church, I run the social media accounts. So I manage the Facebook, the Instagram, trying to branch out on some new platforms. We just got into posting um, pretty consistently on uh, YouTube on the social side of it. I want to branch out in other areas because there's other channels and other platforms we can share Jesus on. So, you know, um, other than that, I am a travel agent. Uh, I specialize in Disney vacations. Ooh. And... Um, other than that, I and have And she's whole... good. <laughs> if Andy says I'm good, then she's I'm She's good. good. Book her. Yeah. I, think yeah. Andy, I think Andy's a client. Right? Yeah. No, I am. Yeah. yeah. They are. Yeah. <laughs> they are. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, I'm a wife. I have my own social media presence that I um, market my business through. And um, I've had a podcast, like I said. I run a, a, a little clothing business on the side. Uh, sell some apparel. So, yeah. She does it all. Yeah. So entrepreneur might be a good yeah like, anything all. that the Lord just inspires me to do I just do. But yeah. you haven't always done social media stuff. You were what did you do before? Oh yeah, that's right. I was a teacher. A teacher of what? I taught drama. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I taught drama. So if you see me being extra in a church, that's my um, theater side coming out. You you're, know, you're yeah, a thespian. I'm, yeah, very much a. <laughs> Thespian. I love that. Yes. <laughs> she said it right. I said yes. it wrong. No, no, I have to emphasize that T in the H. <laughs> no, I love I'll it. Get cut out. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah. I love it. So you taught theater. Yes, I taught theater. When yeah. did when did you and your husband Eric get together? When did y'all yeah, what when did y'all get together? When did y'all cause y'all came here in 2016, you said 2016. Yes, 2016. Where did y'all come from, move from, all that? All that. Um, so my husband and I met in high school. Um, and he didn't know my name. He called me the B2K girl, which was a boy group that I was really into. Me and my best friend. Oh, that's were really into. Yeah. Did you you know about B2K? Yeah, but yeah. I yeah, he called you that because he didn't know your name. He did not know my name. <laughs> <laughs> so, and we also weren't interested in each other. I was the geeky girl and I would um, carry around these little pins and hand them out to people to tell them that, you know, they're loved. So they knew that they were loved, you know, from the um, mall or whatever you see the um, the little red buttons yeah. at the diamond yeah. store. So, yeah, I would go to the mall, grab all those and hand them out to friends or whatever. And he thought I was super weird because I did that <laughs> anyway. So fast forward, we left and um, I went to college. I had to get out of Texas. So I went to college in a different state and a hurricane brought me here. Um, so there's that back so to I can, Texas back to Texas the place I was running away from and uh, but the good thing about that is I got saved at the university I was at so um, I got saved there uh, came back to Texas and you know live with my parents and stuff and I met my husband again in the mall and at a Christian bookstore and we were surprised to know that he was saved also so my sister had gotten saved I got Aww. saved he was saved I was like this is so nice. cool let's just hang out so he would hang out with us and you know it was very platonic super platonic everyone thought he was gonna marry one of my sisters and I was just like 
whatever. I'm just, you know, hanging out. And uh, yeah, so that's how we met. And then, you know, things got romantic and stuff uh-huh. in 2009. And we've been together since then. We got married in 2011. Oh, and so, 2000, yeah. Y'all yeah. have been together forever. Forever. Yeah. And so after that, we helped uh, start a church um, shortly. At, no, actually shortly it was almost immediately after we got married uh, <laughs> we became wow. like uh like we crossed the threshold of our house and went straight into ministry and so um yeah holy um, moly yeah yeah it's yeah. a lot yeah, yeah so it was funny because when we came here everyone was like y'all look like newlyweds and it was kind of like we are we were because we spent all the beginning time of life yeah in ministry it's like that's all we knew you know uh, church planning you know going out just grinding it out you know starting out a new ministry uh with the people we were with and so we moved here that's when we actually got a chance to like get to know each other <laughs> well y'all still kind of look and act like newlyweds which i think is great that's, that's cute the way it should be. That's the yeah way it should that be. It, yeah exactly yeah so anyway so yeah and the lord um we actually would i think since 2014 we were coming out this way with the ministry we were with um to go to the Believers Convention, and the Believers Convention, um, after one of them, we really felt led to just move here, and I mean, it was really, but everything in our life at that time was really quick. The Lord would tell us stuff, and we just did it. Like, mm-hmm. we didn't think about it much. We just did it, and so, um, yeah, the Lord was like, move out to Fort Worth, so I remember, <laughs> like, telling my mom, like, hey, we're moving, and she's like, what? And I'm like, yep, we'll see you when we get back, you know, whenever we come back, <laughs> and yeah, so we moved here um, November 2016. Um, we we were actually we were going to Eagle Mountain and um we were there for a while and um um I don't know we were here looking for a house around here and it felt like a flop like a uh a scam and so anyway um we were like well, Lord, for the house? Why? yeah for the house because okay. we couldn't uh, however the situation worked with you know trying to actually look at the house it didn't work out and so anyway we were like okay lord why are we here and I had the thought I was like what city are we in we were like Crowley we were like okay <laughs> Uh, I think Jerry Savelle has a church around here. And I look it up and we were literally three minutes away. And so we just drove around the corner and parked right out there and prayed about it. We were like, yeah, we're going to go here next Sunday. And we would drive from Houston wow. out here every wow. Sunday. Yeah, every Sunday until we moved out here. You so, know what? Yeah. I see cars parked in the parking lot sometimes. And I'm like, who is that? Yeah. Maybe it's somebody maybe. praying about coming here. Maybe so it I, was Rashida. Yeah. 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 Maybe I shouldn't have that reaction. Like, who is it? Like, oh, yeah, good no, for them. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, that was one of the times where we were like, look for a place to live and we um yeah we were like okay so next Sunday when we drive up here we'll get up at like four in the morning and drive all the way to Eagle Mountain but that next week we decided to drive you know four o'clock in the morning come here cut an hour off of your commute yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) how did you feel when you first came here what was that like um I don't know it kind of felt like I it's it's weird because I am I I am now and I had been then like just used to just serving so I just it was just weird to like even like my theater side it's weird to sit in a play you know what I mean because it's like I'm used to being backstage so like sitting in a church you know like I whenever I come to a new church I'm just kind of looking I'm like okay just catching vibe you know Mm -hmm. and it was just like you know it felt like home you know but you know you just you know just enjoying the experience of not (laughs) doing a million yeah. things on Sunday too, you know? Um, so, um, yeah, it, it felt great. It was very homey. Um, people were welcoming, you know, it was weird. I met pastor Justin and he's like, <laughs> I, I, he's, you know, going around and meeting people he didn't know. And, you know, he's like, hi, I'm Justin. I'm like, pastor Justin, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, you're the pastor you're not going to introduce yourself as the pastor and so anyway yeah it was also weird because that was the same Sunday that Dr. Savelle taught and he had invited everyone out to biker weekend that next weekend and we came out to biker weekend that next oh, nice. weekend okay so, yeah so anyway it was it was weird it was fun you know just weird like not weird from a sense of I'm you not in a working. serving role. Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not serving, but it was good. You know, um, I got a chance to sit under Dr. Svell, you know, outside of the Believers Convention, mm-hmm. which was different, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, received the word and loved the worship. It just, I don't know. It felt like home. It felt yeah. like home. <laughs> so, yes, it felt like home for Eric. He went to the bathroom and was like, the Lord spoke to me, uh, you know. See, God speaks to you everywhere, even in <laughs> yeah, the bathroom. even in the bathroom. <laughs> So 
anyway, I just remember that because he told me he was like, yeah, coming out the bathroom. I remember the Lord saying, yeah, this is the church that um, God um, told us to be at, you know. And look, so, at, look yeah. at him now. Like he does our online sound and he's yeah. an integral yeah. part of the team. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, y'all both are. Yeah. I don't think we could like run a Sunday without either of you. Honestly. Way. No. And I'm being serious and you're going to say, Oh yes, you can. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, I'm sure of it. We could not run a Sunday smoothly without you or your husband. Praise the Lord. We're just, no pressure. Yeah. Or anything. No, pr- no pressure. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It takes a, like yeah. three people to replace what Rashida does. I on know. A Sunday morning. It's well, true. Thanks God for so, the opportunity to grow the team and stuff. We'll get you there. just, <laughs> I mean, you're, I mean, planning a church is no small feat. Yeah. And being mm-hmm. involved in all of that and understanding that the inner workings behind the scenes, people get such a weird, like, idea about ministry just being platform or just being, you know, what happens on a Sunday morning at 10 a.m. when the lights go on. But there's so much more so behind much, it. And, yeah. and you've been able to see that even like from the the ground up. Um, and now you're coming here and using yeah. all the gifts and talents and the things that God put in you here. Yeah. When you did theater stuff, were you, you did backstage or were you I was a backstage. Okay. Yeah. I grew up thinking I was going to be a Disney Channel star. And <gasps> Didn't so we that's all? how I got <laughs> into theater because I'm like this is gonna happen and it didn't and I somehow (laughs) somehow I got into um backstage work and really liked it so yeah because you do a lot of things behind the scenes so I wondered like if that was something that you yeah yeah my theater teacher and so it was like yeah let's yeah let's put you on sound and uh eventually I I did a little bit of stage management so yeah interesting that's how I got into backstage yeah that's awesome how did you get into social media like, where does that passion come from? I feel like I have, well, I mean, millennials are weird because <laughs> we grew up with social yeah. media. We grew up before social media was here. And then, like, it was part of our growing up, kind of. Coding on MySpace, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we got to see the early workings of it. Yeah. Where everyone else, you know, after us kind of see, like, the benefit and the fruit of it. And they're able to maximize it and take it to the next levels and make Anyway, we're not talking about that. So um, <laughs> the way I got into social media, um, like where did- just on my own, really. Um, I started managing my own accounts, and I had a friend. I have a friend. She's still my friend um, who did my photography for my wedding, and she was um, she um, was running a Facebook page. She said, hey, can you help me manage my Facebook page? I'm like, sure. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. And so did that. I did that a little bit for the church plant that um, I was a part of at my last church. And um, I just really got into it. 2016 is when things started to change on Instagram. And I was like, this is an opportunity for me to really learn. So I picked a couple people that I would just watch. And I kind of just went from there, um, learning about that and then coming here and doing it here I was serving with Tessa who was the old creative right. team um, director before you know all the things we have now and um, I was helping with graphics but you know my production time was slow and you know I wouldn't really grasp in the style that she was doing uh, I felt like and I looked at our socials I said that could be so much more you know I was yeah. like you know but she didn't have time to do mm-hmm. that and I was just like I just see you know so much more than just like quotes and ins- inspiration like we can do that and that's all we were basically doing at the time and promoting events but I'm like we can see the people of heritage we can see you know like the things we're doing you know I was like let me just you know, help out with that if you feel okay with that. She was like, sure, you know, you can start with scheduling. And then it just kind of developed into that. And that really allowed me to see like the reach we're able to, ha- not just our church, but people have with social media, the opportunities outside of, you know, just posting your family pictures and things mm-hmm. like that, you know, that you can have on social. Yeah. So yeah, it's something that I love now. There's a lot of influence that you can have on social media yeah. that people don't take advantage of. So I don't much. think enough. Like yeah. you you have access to the whole world yeah. on social media. And if you do it right and you do it well, then you can grow so much. People hear about us via Instagram and YouTube. Like that's incredible. Or yeah. the countries that we reach that we normally wouldn't be able to reach because of social media, I think yeah. is awesome. Yeah. 
really awesome. It's awesome to be able to like talk to people in like Pakistan and like pray for them. Yeah, and, you know, right? like yeah. it's you know, like wild too. It's like you know, but it's taking literally what we say here is like loving people outside of these walls, right? But, like right. outside of the walls of Crowley or Texas, even like there's so much That's right. the point. you can have, you know. Yeah, so. You know, I love that, you know, like the front door to our church, I heard this quote, I didn't make this up, are, is in everybody's hand. Like mm-hmm. when we put, we put what our church is, this is, this is heritage, it's in your hand and making it so their social, the, our social content reaches those people mm-hmm. is huge for the kingdom of God. It's like, it changes the goalposts from let's fill all the seats with people to let's reach the people outside yeah. of these walls where they're at. Yeah. What does that look like? For social and how do you measure our reach? Um, how it looks for heritage is um, basically just echoing what is said here. So um, a lot of times when I'm searching for things to post on social, um, I'm listening for the heart of the message and uh, I, not, just the heart, the heart of the message, the heart of what you know, Pastor Justin or Dr. Savelle, whoever's ministering is uh, uh, their their heart in the message, but then God's heart in the message because th- you have to separate the difference between the the words for our church sometimes mm-hmm. and the word just for believers People. in general, yeah. especially since we're international ministry. So I have to keep that in mind, you know. So I'm like, uh, that's a word for heritage. Maybe or maybe not post that. You know, it depends mm-hmm. on what's going on. Because mm-hmm. the goal for me in social is I'm reaching people outside of these walls. And you never, ever know who is looking at yeah. these things. And so um, yeah, making sure we're keeping things in general, too. So I want to inspire people um, to listen to the message more. So I try to grab a part of the message. just like, okay, now. Reel them yeah, in. Yeah, reel them in. But <laughs> then also, too, it has to make sense, you know. So I'm, I don't want to put anything out there. If you don't have the full context, it's like, what? Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's like an inside joke that people tell around you and you don't. You don't you get don't it. Know. You're like, what are yeah. y'all laughing at? So you have yeah. to be. You have to really be led by the Holy Spirit and be yes. wise about how you post stuff. Yeah. At the same time, our goal is to draw them in. Yes. My favorite thing, though, is seeing the people in the church. Because, I mean, we've talked about this before. It's, I, like, before, whenever, like, my dark years when I wasn't going to church, I I didn't know that church people could look like I look or, you know, that it was okay to like have tattoos in church or like to dress this way. And you know what I mean? Like I didn't see people who looked like me. So it was kind of like a turnoff. That's why I like seeing all the different kinds of people in our church. That's what's big for me. Like, yes, hearing the message and stuff obviously is important, Mm -hmm. but I also like seeing just all the different kinds of people that we have in this church that we're welcoming of people who look like everybody you know what I mean that's that's big for me I love I love seeing that I love that too and if you're listening like we love that like you see (laughs) us with a camera in our hand like we like can you take a picture of us yes Yes. (laughs) Yes, thank you so much so yeah so you've worked in different ministries before what was that like to go from one ministry to the next or to learn how one church does things and just learning to cope with different surroundings within the church or different ways of, you know, trusting people within the church and all of that. That is a very good question because, um, (laughs) it can be a, um, challenge sometimes depending on different situations that happen. I think for me, um, the biggest thing that the Lord has taught me is just honor. Um, honoring that person, but just uh, remembering and keeping in the forefront of your head that you're honoring God and not, um, serving people. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so, and because people are human and they make mistakes and stuff like that, you know? And so always making sure that I'm seeing it from that perspective of, okay, this is something I'm doing for God and not for a person, especially like serving under, because when I came on social, that was a really big thing too. It was nerves and people who come and serve under me now and like, or not serve under me. That sounds so weird. People who come and train under me now, um, they, they'll say, oh, I'm kind of, you know, scared. Like, how did that post look? How did it go? Cause they're like, you know, they know that, 
the Savills may be looking at it or right. Pastor Justin right. may be looking at the socials or whatever. I'm like, oh, it'll be great, you know, and um, not taking it from a position of it's like, oh, I want to do something that's going to please the Savills. It's like, or, you know, Pastor Justin is like, I try to keep that in the back. I'm like, okay, what's going to please God? You know right. what I mean? Right. And not just like conform to people's what what I think people are like. I want to make sure God's pleased. So, yeah. Um, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Our job is in doing what we're doing, like whether it be social media, photography, and you, whatever it is, we are, our job is to please God and to resound his message. But has it always been easy for you to, to do that and not try and please leaders or not try to, um, please a person? No, it hasn't been. Um, I think something that I'm still overcoming is just people pleasing in general, which is why I have to keep that in the forefront of my mind. Yeah. (laughs) If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, because the ministry that we came out of, I feel like when you're a newer believer, cause I was still kind of new. It's like, you just want to, you know, do all the Christian things and just, you know, I want to please God. I want to please people or whatever. But sometimes there's a fine line of, yeah. you know, like it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. <laughs> it's a slippery slope. And so the last um, ministry we were at, I feel like it was a lot of people pleasing, yeah. if that makes sense. Um, and that's not a knock on the ministers is just, I think I had to grow in an area of making sure that it was more God focused and not based on what um, other people are going to say or feel about me. Or uh, even if after, you know, maybe I do something wrong, however, you know, things happen afterwards, you know, like, because people are people, humans are humans, you know what I mean? So it's like people get mad or people, you know, um, are upset, you know, because of certain things and not allowing that reaction to affect how I do things. Right. And so I think that was a big thing that I had to learn um, just coming out of that last ministry into this one. Um, keeping that in the forefront of my mind really helped me to keep different things in perspective, make sure that I'm growing spiritually and I can stand on a firm foundation of my own faith yeah. and not other people other people's faith, if that right. makes sense. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I've yeah. thought about before, like if I do something wrong, like, or not necessarily if I do something wrong, but if, if I'm not getting a good reaction from people learning how to, you don't know what anybody's dealing with. Yeah. Like, I don't know, I don't yes. know where somebody else is with their walk with God and how they're responding to me could be hidden behind something, something else that's happening. And you have to, yes, have that in the the front of your mind is like, okay, my job is to please God. If I miss it, then that's on me, but I can do better. It's not about the person or how they're taking it. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. No, I, I really, I really like that because like you said, like, you never know what's going on in another person's life yeah, or what is happening, what ha- has happened in the past. So even now in difficult situations, because my past has been difficult in, uh, in places where it comes to ministry, but you know, I've had some instances in recent years since I've been here in 26, uh, since 2016, you know, where it's, I have people who I've had different situations happen with and it's, easy to be like oh yeah I'm gonna be offended by that but Mm -hmm. stepping outside of that yeah life is not about me (laughs) it does not revolve around me what might that person be going through yeah what were they thinking Mm -hmm. um you know they might not have meant to like um communicate it in that way um okay so you know think about it from that perspective and not just um well, it's not to yeah. say that the church is imperfect, but people are imperfect yes. and people, exactly. people hurt people. It happens. People are going to hurt people. And there's been times where like, even I've communicated something and I'm like, I needed to maybe, chill out a little bit, like yeah. maybe not have said it that way, or maybe not have done it that way. But <laughs> this is people, whether, when you deal with people, wherever you are, you're going to have strife or you're going to have things like that. But the good thing about in a church is we have the tools right there to yeah. walk through it and to work through it with people. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 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 
Definitely. But what has coming here and walking through some of that stuff, how has God helped you get overcome that? Mm -hmm. I feel like when we came here, we were in, um, it just, you know, you have those dark times in your life. It's just like, you look back and you're like, sunshine, sunshine, dark. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Are dark. Yeah. Dark. Yeah. Yeah. Pitch black. Can't see where you're going. Um, yeah. So um, that even though it was it was a bright time because we were here, we finally found a place that we could like feel comfortable growing in. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, it was still kind of dark. I think um, here I know I know here and the biggest thing that when I went into doing social here I was like I want people to experience what I've experienced mm -hmm. here on social media and just mm -hmm. throughout the world or whatever um being able to just grow in a place that is just super loving and like willing to give you second chances you yeah. know that was that was it, it's just that wasn't something I had experienced um, all the time mm -hmm. in previous places. And so coming here, um, it, uh, coming here, God helped me to see it was okay to step out again. Yeah. Does that make sense? Some of the things, because I'm doing a lot of the same things I was doing in previous mm -hmm. ministries or whatever, where it wasn't so hot yeah, <laughs> and it wasn't always a place where I felt like I could, um, make mistakes, you know? And um, coming here and being able to, like, make those mistakes and not feel like the world was in Right. <laughs> mistakes are okay. Mistakes you are know? good. These are learning opportunities. I teach that to my child. Like, yeah. we are making mistakes is okay. Yeah. yeah. We learn from them. This is yeah. a good learning experience. Let's move on. You yeah. Know? Don't sulk in that mistake. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a total totally different experience that I had here. I had never experienced that ever. You know, I remember, um, uh, cause I used to serve, well, I still serve in per presenter. Um, but on a Sunday I made the, I don't even remember the mistake. It was this small, so small. <laughs> and, um, my leader at the time came up to me and was like, Hey, I saw you made that mistake, but it's all right. And she moved on to the next thing. And I burst out in tears. Cause I'm oh like, my gosh. you're about to nail me. You are yeah. about yeah. to nail me. And she's like, she had to like, I, I, you know, <laughs> she had to minister love to you. Yeah, yeah she had to yeah. minister that love to me and um, just be like, you know, it's okay and give me the second chance. And just, I, I and, and from there, I kept seeing situations mm -hmm. like that where it's like, I made a mistake and I did, I promise I didn't mean to. I promise. And they're like, it's, it's okay. okay. But that also <laughs> helps you as a leader too. Yes. All of us as a leader, that yes. whenever we have people who are on our team who make mistakes, that, helps us walk in love for those people to like yeah. for everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. It helps us yeah. as leaders. I'm so glad I had that experience because now I can replicate that same grace yeah. to, like you said, I'm saying the same thing over again, but yeah, no, no I'm able good. to do that. And I'm glad I had that. Cause had I not had that chance to feel that, I don't know that I would have ever learned it because mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just previous ministries, just life. I'm hard on myself. I'm, you know, yeah, working know. for other <laughs> <laughs> you know um so Rashida I is a perfectionist <laughs> to the core I try not to be but um yeah um I would have never learned that and heritage taught me that yeah yeah you know so I'm very grateful for um learning that here I love that I love being imperfect like I love that like I don't like perfection because I like room to grow I like oh, room yeah. to like do better yeah I don't want to be perfect I want to right I want to grow it's like it leaves room for God to move right yeah yeah like especially when I get like when I get into a place where I try to be perfect yeah at something I'm for sure gonna make more mistakes right but where I can decrease God can increase and like where I'm weak he is made strong so it it helps me depend on him mm -hmm. I just love that that heritage showed you truly what the love of God looks like in the kingdom of God. Yeah. Yes. Um, because God is not expecting perfection from us. Yeah. He's expecting just a heart that's open. Yeah. Which is, which is a, be a beautiful thing. Yeah. yeah. What would you say to people who have experienced stuff like that in the kingdom or out of the kingdom in the business world or what, how would you encourage them? I would encourage them not to be afraid to trust again. Yeah. 
I'd encourage him. Oh God. <laughs> I'd encourage him not to be afraid to trust again, because mm-hmm. I think that's the biggest thing with heritage because I was at a place when I came here, I was like, I don't know if I could ever do that again. Even coming on staff was yeah. hard because um, I was like, I don't know if I can do that again, you know, but every situation I was met with an opportunity to learn about uh, more about the love of God and um, to see how God loves through his, his people, you mm-hmm. know, and if you don't put yourself in a position to um, trust again, you never get a chance to experience that. And yeah. you think everybody's trash yeah. <laughs> for the rest of your life because of bad experiences that you have. And that's not the case. That's not what a true. miserable place to be, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, that's good. That's a great answer. Yeah. That's yeah. a good answer. You have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to, right? you know, you might get burned, but how will you know unless you try? Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, we love you very much. And we're Thank really, you. really <laughs> beyond grateful that you're part of our team and part of our family. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I mean, you're, uh, I love everybody, but you're one of my favorites. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get cut. Rashida, <laughs> Rashida was my wedding photographer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 That was fun. And thank you for trusting me with that. You know, I was just like, I would yeah. trust you with my life. <laughs> Literally my entire, like, yes. I was telling CJ, no, I was telling CJ the other day, we were in the car driving home from out of town and we were just talking about like trusting correction and trusting people's like inputs and guidance and stuff like that i was like rashida could tell me anything and i'm gonna be like yes i'll try it yes. yeah. No, yeah i literally no. told him that i was like if she gave me an input on something or like oh yeah you should do this better i would be like yes okay great <laughs> exactly i will do it the same i'm yeah. exactly the same praise the lord praise yeah. god so um you've been here long enough to know that really our house is all about making winners mm-hmm. and clearly you are one um but what is that statement when you hear it, what does that mean Making winners in life means um, getting back up again and not being afraid to do that. Not just staying on the ground when you <laughs> fall. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, being willing to get back up again. What does the Bible say? You know, a righteous man falls, but he gets back up again. You know, right. um, just being willing to trust again, to live again, not yeah. staying in that same place. And I'm ministering to myself because there's still areas. I'm not saying that I'm perfect in that. It, it, by any means, mm-hmm. I am still a person that needs to learn okay Rashida you can't um just make everything about that last experience we have to get back up again we have to try again so that's what ma- making winners in life means to me it's a fabulous that's answer yeah. I, I just appreciate your heart to come I know that um you've been a sounding voice and a voice of wisdom and sensitivity to the Holy Spirit for me as I walked into the comm team and been part of it and been on your team um, helping on the backside of stuff. Mm-hmm. I've learned so much from you. And so oh, I really cool. appreciate it. Church, I want you, I just want to encourage you to, to be engaged on our social media platforms, look at it, share it, repost it, comment, look at what Rashida is doing out there because it really is resounding the message of our house outside of these walls. And, and she's got a team around her too. So she's got a lot of people that work on our team and contribute to that as well. But if you see something on social, Instagram, Facebook, and whatever other platform, YouTube, whatever other platform we go to, please check it out. Please uh, make that. If you're going to be on social media, I know some of people aren't, but if you're going to be on social media, be on ours. Yes. Um, yes. And, uh, and, and tell her she's doing good because she is, and she's so humble. She 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 won't believe you, but she's <laughs> she does so good. It's so good. And don't be afraid to be on social. Yeah, come join yeah. the team. Not not just our team, but just ministry. Yeah. yeah, just being on social. There's someone that looks like you that needs to hear your story. Don't That's be afraid good. to good. share it. Love that. <sighs> That's a great place. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, church family, for joining us for another winning conversations. Again, we will link all of our social media accounts at the church in the description below. So that way, no matter where you are, you can get connected with us and take the time to follow, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Uh, to let us know that you are with us in reaching outside of these walls. Um, And so we are so blessed by this time with Rashida, and we hope that you join us next week. We have another great episode lined up for you on Winning Conversations.